these uh these these extreme weather conditions whenever they happen now we see the disparity we see the disparity of of um reaction and and government interference and recovery efforts uh it, it, comparing it to uh, comparing the 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 government recovery and government relief to like somewhere like Puerto Rico versus uh, somewhere on mainland U.S. with uh, wealthier people, and you realize, like, oh no, that dystopian future capitalist, uh, uh, that that future capitalist dystopia is here already. Like, we are already experiencing this right now. It's here and it's now. I feel like it's uh, it's off-putting the uh, the the. It's kind of like a coping mechanism. I feel like when we say things along the lines of. Amazon driver tracking cameras and schedules are kind of fuck with how robotic and ruthless it is. Yeah. Um, we, we try to kick the can down the line by saying like, oh, that's going to be worse in, in the future. And that's going to be so much worse in the future. But that's a way to cope with the horrifying reality that we are experiencing right now. You understand? I did forget to tweet. Yes, it's Friday fun day. Um, I'm not supposed. Yeah, I wasn't gonna. I, I was gonna do a little bit of politics today because I didn't do fucking politics uh, yesterday. I only did like an hour. I I don't think I should hit the heist with them, dude. I I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna. I'm going to tell them right now. No, I, I need to do... I, I, I got it. I'm letting them down, but I have to fucking... All right, poll it. Heist or politics? Poll it right now. Let's see. I want to do the heist, but poll it right now. I don't even know if they, there's enough time here. Go vote. I know the GA news is crazy. Uh, there was a Georgia Democratic state senator that literally got fucking kicked out like, like Jim Crow era shit. Okay. Keep, uh, the poll is live right now, by the way. I'm going to put, I'm going to strap on my fucking heart beat monitor in a second. Oh, it's too late. They already started. Never mind then. Okay. Well, too late. Votes, yeah, votes truly don't matter, boys. Your your voice your voice does not matter. Will you tweet when the heist is over? What? Oh, oh, like if I go do the heist, I don't think I'll be able to do it. We're gonna we're gonna look at this in a second. Hold on. Okay, never mind. All right, sorry, boys. GGs. We're gonna we're gonna do politics right now. Doing some light politics, talking about Amazon, pee bottles. The GA state rep that got arrested and.
You seem miserable. No, I, I love this shit, guys. I, I love this. Like, I, I love politics. So, there's no, this is not like me uh, being devastated by this at all. Uh, so, you're, you're crazy. This is going to be fun to watch, too. The very new Veritasum, like, why capitalism ruins. No, Heist did win, but they already started, so I guess it was a GG's, like, on the Heist. Okay. Friday fun day, doing some light policy, talking about Amazon P-Balls, J State very corrupt, they got it arrested. And reacts, then, uh, it's fight night in Los Santos. Get in now. I'm, and I'm going to fist fight for the honor of Olive Garden. Get in now. Streamers taking RP2 serious is a damn game. I mean, it's uh, it is fun as fuck, and you have to take it serious. It's a, uh, it's like saying actors take their job too seriously. It's just you're acting, bro. What do you mean, like? It's literally entertainment. If we don't take it seriously, it's not going to. If we don't take it seriously. Uh, then. Then it's not the kind of content that you want uh, to watch. You know what I mean? Here you go. You can blast it. Now I'm finally fucking uh, tweeting to the Normans. It's an art form, so of course it takes it. Not taking it serious kind of removes the point of it being roleplay. Yeah, exactly. Didn't you do a heist with a dude you're fighting yesterday? No, he, he's on their, he's in their group though. He's in their team. Do the chatter badges mean anything to you as a 20 plus K streamer? I'm writing a custom Twitch bot. What do you mean? Chat badges? Yes, they do. Okay, I think you would prefer if it was more chill like you the full on TV show with Arx follow up episodes so it was difficult to start watching. No, I know, I know, I know. We need to do recaps. I need to have like an editor do like light recaps of, you know, last night on uh, you know, Umberto Donato Pecorino. Ninja take notes, this is how you justify try harding? What? What are you talking about? You and Moon are so committed to your characters and their stories make it makes the two of you very entertaining to watch. Playing Don is the most fun I've seen you have on Twitch and I hope that you stay interested in RP. I do. I If I didn't fucking care about it, I wouldn't do it when I'm I'm like when there's only 8,000 people in here. If I didn't care about playing the character for the 8,000 people that are that are uh in here that want to watch me play Don this might sound straightforward, but is the reason reviewers are down because the Biden issue is fucking boring? No, no, no. I don't know why people say this. Guys, guys, this is the last time I'm going to talk about this, okay? Before we just get into this uh, news story. Okay, listen. If I literally just never played video games and only fucking talked about politics and then also did React content, I would have 30,000 people in here all the time. Probably even more. That's just how it works it's the main thing that a lot of people come in here is the the conversation that they can have with other chatters and with me okay that's it that's the reality that's precisely why when i do politics and reactions there is usually around 30,000 people up to 30,000 people in here okay it's not joe biden it's not donald trump shit does get a little bit more boring with joe biden and it's on purpose but there's still plenty of fucking issues Okay, there are still plenty of fucking issues to cover. 
Like, I promise you, you telling me uh, what you think is the reason for why things are going on is like me telling you how to eat a fucking Hot Pocket that your mommy makes for you, okay? That's your expertise. You, that's your life. That's second nature. You know what the, the internal dynamics of your family looks like, okay? Just like I know what the internal dynamics of streaming looks like. So please... I promise you, uh, I know that there's a lot of, I know that there's a lot of uh, well-intentioned chatters in here who are like, well, maybe this is the problem, or maybe that's the problem. Like, I promise you, I know what the issue is, okay? And I know how to fix it, but it doesn't matter. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's just, uh, I, I care more about trying to um, trying to put together a balance so I don't lose my fucking mind. Even though I am a little bit. Anyway. Okay, let's keep going. Let's, uh, let's move on to the fucking, uh, Let's move on to the Amazon pee bottle thing. Okay, so, um, so Amazon originally tweets out, you don't really believe in this, like, pee bottle thing, do you? I mean, nobody would work for us. I already talked about why they still work for Amazon, because that's how coercive our current organization of the economy is. This is part of the reason why, when the government actually starts doing things, okay, when the government actually starts doing things, all of a sudden... There is the conversation that economists like to engage in called the moral hazard, right? Oh no, if we give people fucking welfare, then they're not going to go to work. If we give people enough money th that they can survive, then why the fuck are they going to take on all of these jobs that uh, they normally would not want to take? It's the fear of not having a roof over your head or not having enough money to put food on your table that drives people into working in conditions like Amazon where they piss inside of fucking bottles. It's not, it's not even like Amazon. It's not even Amazon doing it on its own either. Okay. I work for Amazon, nobody pees in bottles. All right, Tot Hopic. Maybe it, you're fucking part of the facility, they don't. But the pissing in bottles thing is literally documented at this point. So I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And not only, not only did a British journalist uncover this years ago, like a couple years ago, okay? That it was happening in a distribution facility. But Ken Klippenstein, friend of the show... Ken Liechtenstein also found out that the Amazon, uh, that the, the, uh, higher ups at Amazon are aware that people are pissing in fucking bottles. Okay. The reason why these people are pissing in bottles is not also because of COVID. But the reason why people are pissing in bottles is because they need to, they are closely guarded. They are closely watched and regulated. Okay. And, and uh, their actions are, are, are being closely watched and there are time constraints that they have. And in order to keep hitting their time to maximize efficiency, which is literally put together by quants, and and uh and and mathematicians and even uh you know fucking artificial intelligence and machine learning that tries to straight up find the best routes possible within within the factories or uh or uh try to you know improve the efficiency of the supply chain as best as possible there's there's people making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that literally look at numbers to try to improve every part of the supply chain and they have these quotas so 
uh, these human beings that have to piss and shit literally have to follow the the numbers on a spreadsheet that they that it put in front of them. So that's why they take these sorts of actions and piss and shit in fucking bottles and bags. Punishing them for taking a piss or a shit in a bottle or, or a bag is ridiculous. Instead, they should, I don't know, have some fucking shitting time. Why do they not have shitting time for themselves? Well, because they don't have a fucking labor union. That's it. If they had a group of individuals that could demonstrate collective action and force a company that has all of the power to meet their demands and show the amount of power that they have by engaging in collective action and work stoppages, they would be able to say, these are, we need more time off. Like we need more time off task to piss and shit. So we don't piss in bottles because Currently, with the way that the power structure is designed in a regular corporation, which is inherently authoritarian, what ends up happening is the bosses just say, well, okay, I'm going to punish you for pissing and shitting in a bottle. So what do you want them to do? Just hold it in? Is that what you're saying? The supply chain is a problem. A uh, problem is a problem in computer science called the traveling salesman, and it's NP complete which means it's impossible to solve via a computer in an efficient manner, so it's actually easier to get people to do it. They would call me whenever they notice the gap between deliveries to question you on what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So to say that Amazon workers don't do this is a lie. And to say that Amazon doesn't even know that the workers do this is also a double lie. Turns out Amazon does know that this is happening. And the way that they went about it is like, instead of adding additional time off, they decided to fucking uh, punish people that are pissing and shitting in bottles. Or even when they calculate time off, it's probably not enough. So a lot of people take shortcuts this way and piss and shit in a bottle so that they do other shit on their time off. You see what I'm saying? Like smoke breaks. Working at Amazon is super isolating. I currently work their packaging box. I will have days where I don't talk to a single person at work. The chance of a union happening are low just because of how little I contact with my coworkers is probably on purpose. Anyway. This is the, uh, this is the, the, most engaging part of it, right? Pissing in a bottle is visceral. So you hyper-focus on this. The other side of this equation that is even more damaging is employees that engage in backbreaking work day in, day out, uh, and, and uh, not get covered by... Uh, not get covered by adequate health care the government should be providing for them and not get covered by adequate workplace safety conditions that would make sure that they don't have these sorts of issues. One thing that, for example, happens in chicken factories, as we talked about before, is because of uh, because the, uh, the, the, the boatload of work in chicken factories are, are done by undocumented immigrants that have even less of a say in this process because they have the fear of being deported and ripped away from their friends and family and everything that they know uh, if, they are, are, if they are to speak out. Uh, with uh, ICE uh, coming in and doing like a quick dragnet uh, in your place of business. Because of that fear, for example, inside of chicken factories, they have created, as I think it was John Oliver who talked about it, they've created a system in which you go to the nurse. Okay, instead of going to a doctor, if you fuck yourself over, you go to the nurse there. The nurse just tells you like, here, you just patch yourself up and, and keep going. That leads to much worse long time uh, long-term health complications. This happens in Amazon facilities as well. It is more cost-efficient for Amazon to have 
a fucking ambulance outside of, uh, at all times, outside of one of their workplaces, uh, outside of one of their distribution centers, instead of putting in a fucking uh, uh, a, a solid uh, ventilation system with an AC unit with centralized cooling inside of a distribution facility, right? Like, this shit happens all the fucking time. So they just go, fuck it. If you have a heat stroke, we'll just ambulance you out of there. For corporations, whatever is uh, cost effective, whatever maximizes the profit margin uh, for shareholders is what they're going to do. CEOs and boards, uh, people that sit on boards have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize shareholder value. Either make the workers shareholders or at least like have them uh, uh, have a, a representative of the workers have a seat at the table in a similar capacity to like how unions operate in Germany. Or change it so that it's literally illegal to do all this stuff. So we look at this because it's like pooping in a bag is so dehumanizing, but the, the uh, dehumanizing thing that occurs on a regular basis is often overlooked is what I'm trying to say. The real dehumanizing aspect uh, of, of like not having your workplace have the proper safety regulations because it, uh, it would ruin the profit margins for shareholders. Um, that, that is an ongoing uh, concept. It's an ongoing issue, and it's often overlooked. Amazon News also tweeted out, there's a big difference between talk and action. Senator Sanders has been a powerful politician in Vermont for 30 years, and their minimum wage is still eleven seventy five. dollars Amazon is $15, plus great health care from day one. Sanders would rather talk in Alabama than act in Vermont. So, what's hilarious about the Amazon News account tweeting this, I don't know why they're like trolling like they're fucking selling hot dogs or something. Like why are they why are the did they hire the Wendy social media manager or something? Like what the fuck is this this style of speaking slash uh way of of uh trying to defend Amazon. Going about it in the worst fucking way possible, especially because this allows for uh people like myself and everyone in the media to be like why does why does Amazon have $15 uh, wage? Let's take a look. What was the reason why they have $15 minimum wage at Amazon? What? What the fuck? Wait a minute. I just thought he was like an old socialist and, you know, socialism is when uh, the government does things. Slash socialism is when no iPhone vuvuzela. Are you telling me that? Are you telling me that the reason why Amazon is a fifteen dollar minimum wage already is because of the pressure that Bernie Sanders placed upon them? What? What? This is crazy. This is crazy. Interesting. Interesting stuff. So, idiotic for them to fucking tweet this. Anyway. Uh, their propaganda account is really dog shit for some reason. I don't know why. The worst part about it is that when they fucking, uh, when they increase, this is literally shit posting from the largest company on earth. How the fuck is this a thing I've never heard of before? Yeah, I know. What about the fact that the governor blocked the minimum wage increase as well? Yeah, it's just. Because the social media manager has to piss in a bottle while typing, you have to do to break, bro? No, I, I don't think that. I 
don't know what the fuck's going on with the social media manager at Amazon News. But they're fucking... Yeah, I don't know if they're, like, purposely fucking trying to tank Amazon uh, from the inside or something, but uh, they are not doing a good job. Thank you, Neurotender, for the 10 gifted subs. They responded to Elizabeth Warren. This is extraordinary and revealing one of the most powerful politicians in the United States. Just say she's going to break up with an, break up an American company so they can't criticize her anymore. Wait, what? I didn't write the loopholes you exploit Amazon. Your armies of lawyers and lobby. Okay, they're going to fire this guy. There's no way. What the fuck? What is happening right now? What is happening with the Amazon news account? What the fuck? Did it get hacked or something? They're going to say that they got hacked or that they, it was a rogue employee, right? This guy literally posts like he's on the fucking r slash neoliberal subreddit, dude. Like, he's doing that thing that fucking uh, moronic neolibs do where they're like, they literally talk about something that is good but assume that other people are going to be uh, on the same wavelength as them and straight up be like, yeah, you're right. This is really extraordinary and revealing. I can't believe Elizabeth Warren is doing her job and saying she's going to trust bust. No, this is from 20 minutes ago, dude. Strange tweet, especially considering that even very small businesses manage to tweet things. Not sure this will work. Um, Chatters thought there wouldn't be any content with Biden, LMFAO. Yeah, no, there's always going to be. Um, I didn't write the loopholes you exploit Amazon, your armies of lawyers and lobbyists did, but you bet I'll fight to make you pay your fair share and fight your union busting and then fight to break up big tech so you're not powerful enough to heckle senators with snotty tweets. I mean, it's true. This is really, uh, this is very strange that like Amazon is now, what's next? Is Raytheon going to start tweeting like this? Uh, Lockheed Martin, you're being kind of a simp right now. Our bombs are straight up the bomb. Raytheon account. Like, is that, is that what's going on? There's like, there's too many. I feel like there's too many social media managers out there. Like the, this, the, the market is just flooded with a fuckload of social media managers. So it's gotten to a point where motherfuckers are tweeting like this. Uh, they're just, you, you can't really hire anyone uh, without them sounding like a, like a shitty millennial. We were killing less Middle Easterners in the previous admin. Give us a break. When the Raytheon starts tweeting about com stacking, I'm ironically, I'm unironically moving to Canada. Why the fuck are they doing this? Like, I, it's so stupid. What? There may be very well be reasons to break up Amazon, but a sitting U.S. senator saying they should be broken up for heckling a senator is authoritarian, sensorial nonsense. Guys, are you fucking stupid? Like, are people that dumb? They think that, like, Elizabeth Warren is saying she wants to break up big tech because uh, they're exclusively because they're heckling senators. No, she's saying big tech is so fucking powerful that they can literally do whatever the fuck they're doing and then turn around and heckle senators. That's how fucking powerful big tech is. Like they can literally write the laws and then turn around and fucking heckle senators. It's not the heckling of the senators that's the problem here. It's the fucking powerful part that's the problem here. She's not saying I'm going to literally break up big tech because they're heckling me. She's saying, I'm going to break up big tech because they're so fucking powerful that they can write the laws and then literally flex. Like as though that's how powerful they are. It's the power that is the problem here. Not the fact that 
They are heckling people. What the fuck do you think is the problem here? You you think you think uh your your fucking uh racist uncles you think your racist uncle's fucking jet ski dealership doesn't have the power to create a Twitter account and heckle senators? Like, well, is that what you think is gonna Is that what you think the problem is? The problem is the heckling of the senators and not the literal fucking writing of the laws that she's talking about here? God damn, dude. Liberals, just take one day off from just hyper-focusing on aesthetics, please. Oh, new character unlocked. Oh, fuck yeah. We're going to look at that in a second. Anyway, first they come for Amazon, next they come for Jizki Dealer 69. Yeah. Yeah, here, uh, Ken is looking for leaks, by the way. If you work in Amazon's PR department and have any tips on why they keep shooting themselves in the dick, text me at 202-510-1268. Leaked. Have you seen the video of Jeff Bezos in a mech suit doing evil villain laugh full circle? Yeah. I know. Okay. So that's what's going on, Amazon. So here is um here is uh, uh George State Representative Park Cannon getting fucking arrested for knocking on the door as uh Brian Kemp was signing election restrictions into law in the state of Georgia. We're gonna talk about the election restrictions in a second, but let's get started with this part first. This is one of the most insane things I've seen. Uh, I, I I watched this happen uh, earlier. It's it fucking absolutely preposterous. Why does she have to step back? The governor is signing a bill that affects all Georgians. Why is he doing it in private? And why is he trying to keep elected officials who are representing us out of the- Like, this isn't even like a random protester. This is literally a fucking Georgia state representative. Like- process she was late oh fucking murder her then never mind sorry guys 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 sorry um yeah you know they should just fucking kill her then I i'm surprised she got away with it without being fucking murdered dude No, you oh, are not. No. Represent. She's not under arrest. What is for what? Arrest? Under arrest for. Oh my God! This is literally a hot dog in human form, dude. Look at this, dude. This guy is the literal definition of meat and potatoes. Okay, motherfucker. Like, this dude looks like S Van's character on No Pixel, Cletus Cornwood. Okay. For what? Oh, I'm Sheriff Cornwood. I'm here. I'm Park Ranger Sheriff Cornwood. I'm here to arrest you, madam. You are under arrest for suspicion of being black while also claiming that you're a state representative in Georgia. Who the fuck? Who the fuck would it? it who in Georgia in their right mind would actually fucking, uh, you know, elect someone who is a black to uh, be a state representative? For trying to see something that our governor is doing? Our governor is signing a bill that affects all Georgians, and you're going to arrest? Aren't these guys state troopers? Aren't they supposed to be, like, in shape? They're, they're supposed to be, like, built differently, right? State troopers are literally supposed to undergo, like, different... Like, it's hard to be a fucking state trooper. I guess maybe not in Georgia. An elected representative. Why does the governor have more power than, the, than a representative? Why are you arresting her? That's 
Stop no. arresting her. Why are you arresting Why? her? Boys, boys, is George Orwin when my mom's uh, Facebook gets uh, limited because she keeps posting about how, you know, vaccines are going to give you gay autism. But uh, that's real George Orwin 1989. Uh, it's, it's this, on the other hand, like state officials getting fucking arrested by cops uh, because they are not allowed to uh, be a part of a fucking life-changing um a, a life-changing decision that's that's normal stuff george orwin george orwin uh, bacher 19 19 uh 1937 violation cite the code what is she in violation of i want you to cite the code cite the code cited what are you cite the code Cite the code. Cite the code. Why are you arresting her? Under what? <laughs> this is the funniest part. Governor Brian Kemp tweeted, I was proud to sign SB202 to ensure elections in Georgia are secure fair. Under what? Under what law are you arresting her? Why are you arresting her? Why are you arresting her? So this bill should be called fuck Stacey Abrams and fuck black people bill in Georgia. Okay. They realize that, uh, you know, making it easier for people to be, uh, making it easier for people, specifically black people to vote in a state like Georgia is of course not going to be great for a Republican, uh, uh, for, for an otherwise historically Republican state. That's not very comfortable for them. That's not good. So they got to fucking do something about it. Basically, the, uh, the, the bill is uh, new election rules where uh, it, 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 a sweeping elections bill that limits mail-in voting and changes absentee and early voting. And it was signed into legislation last night. The legislature can now take all power from local counties and counting ballots and remove the secretary of state power. If Trump had this bill, the Trump-backed legislature could have easily reversed the election decisions. Basically, um... Basically, they saw what happened uh, with ease of access to voting, recognized that more democracy is not necessarily good, and changed the fucking rules. They're metagaming. I guess they had to have these uh, extra security protocols because of, uh, because of, you know, the January 6th uh, Capitol insurrection. Oh, no, wait. When that happened, they literally fucking let them walk in. So, um, there's a lot of controversy around it. One, it's, um... It's a hundred pages worth of changes, okay? And it's all Republican proposed ideas for the most part. It it just overhauls absentee and early voting rules. It adds an ID requirement for mail-in voting. It replaces the signature match process. It bans anyone from giving food or drink to a voter waiting in line at a polling place. It limits where absentee uh, ballot drop boxes can go. It adds new powers for the state election board to intervene in county election management. And it replaces the secretary of state on that election board with someone elected by the general assembly. She was, uh, by the way, Park Cannon was released from jail. Um, but was charged with willful obstruction of law enforcement. And uh, now she has that on her fucking record. Oh. So, obviously, if you can't win elections outright, you gotta do what you gotta do, baby.
And if you're a Republican, this is what you got to do. Um... And in the state of Georgia and in most southern states, if you are new here, I will just uh, describe this one more time. Most election laws literally are written to make sure that black populations have no say in the process. Okay, that's it. The most famous examples of uh, the filibuster being utilized in the Senate is to filibust is not to filibust in some bitches but instead to stop the process of civil rights re legislation from passing so that black people have proportional say or, uh, or any say whatsoever in the electoral process. That's it. They don't even want to appeal to the black constituencies. And if they are, uh, if they can just, you know, eliminate, uh, if they can just eliminate DMVs in those areas, uh, implement voter ID rules and regulations, and, and uh, make it as hard as possible for people to go out and vote, which then doesn't just target black people, by the way. It targets poor white people as well, okay? Then, maybe, just maybe, they'll be able to win. So, when there is a situation, when there is a situation where, uh, you know, there's ease of access to voting, and all of a sudden Georgia turns blue, well, that's not great. We got to change that. Everything is about race to you. I know. It's so crazy that I'm talking about race when I'm talking about segregationist senators in the fucking South. Some of which were Democrats, by the way, for the record. I'm just making it all about race when those segregationist senators were actually doing it for some other reason. Probably. Can you please tell me how Jim Crow operated for the longest time, what, what were the boundaries that Jim Crow worked off of? Or are you so ignorant that you would turn around and defend uh, Jim Crow laws by saying, well, separate but equal. There's equality is right in there, brother. Yeah, why are you making segregationism or segregationist policies all about race? Crazy. Bana bir tane şey verir misin anne? E, Diyet Mountain Dew. That was a pretty one-sided argument. Really? Saying segregationist uh, senators that uh, worked very hard to literally eliminate proportional representation and successfully did so. Uh, it did it on the grounds that they wanted to make sure that black people had no say in the in the voter base. That was... That's a one-sided argument? Like, what's the other side of that? That, like, black people are genetically inferior and thus should not have a say in the, uh, in the voting process? Is that the other side of the argument? Because that's literally what they believed. So do you want to argue on that side? Do you want to see uh, if there's any validity to those uh, statements? I guess I'm biased against segregation. I'm sorry. Like, there is no good reason to stop people from uh, voting easier, okay? There's just no argument for it. They'll say undocumented immigrants. That's not a real argument. It does not exist. That is not a real problem. Tell us now, why are you arresting her? Cited. Give me a reason why you are arresting her. Okay, so uh, I'm going to run another ad at the top of the hour every hour. It's a 60-second ad break right now coming to you live, boys. If you no longer want to see the ads, you can subscribe or not. It doesn't fucking matter. Here it is. Here's the ad. Um... <laughs> Hassan, hey, racism is bad. Some dipshit in the chat. Hey, don't be so one-sided.
All right. Let's get into some, just get into a little bit of a fun uh, piece of news before we get into this Veritasium react, which is going to be good. Um, there's a uh, big Dan Rodimer, father of six, law school graduate, former WWE wrestler, Republican candidate for Cons Congress of Texas 06. Chip into your, to our movement below. Are you sick of the bull coming out of D.C.? Texas has big problems, and we need to send a big fighter to Congress to solve them. Send Big Dan to Congress to put an end to Nancy Pelosi's bull. Let's make let's make America Texas again. Three dirtiest jobs in the world: professional wrestling, politician, and bull riding. Let's go, boys! This bitch hire a stunt man to do this? We call that bull Nancy Pelosi. It's the beast. Now that's Texas tough, baby. <laughs> Two out of three dirty jobs done. I'm Big Dan Rodeimer. Texas has big problems. We need a big fighter to solve those problems. The communists in DC are ruining America. We have a big problem. Texas, send Big Dan to Congress. I know how to handle Nancy Pelosi and stop her bull <laughs> and I'll put a boot right in her socialist platform. Well, it looks like I already did. Men and women's bathrooms, boys and girls sports, higher taxes. Bro, he started off with men and women's bathrooms, boys and girls sports, dude. This is, this is it. This is the Republican Party. It's so good. This is it. This is literally an honest Republican Party ad. Higher gas prices. They're building a wall around D.C., but they're not protecting our borders. They're laughing at us. Now they're going to try to take away our guns? Oh, hell no. I moved my family of seven back to Texas because I wanted to raise my kids in a constitutional friendly state. Here in Texas, we are free. Constitutional friendly? Brother, do you not have a fucking, like, editor to, to edit your scripts? Like, what's going on right now? Like, this is a fucking expensive ad that he put together. To Texas, because I wanted to raise my kids in a constitutional friendly state. Here in Texas, we are free. We live free. We are a threat to those in power. They hate Texas. They hate our way of life. The communists in D.C. want to shut down our churches, close our businesses, indoctrinating our children, communism in our classrooms, make our daughters unsafe in sports and school, destroy American borders and our American history. We must stop them. Hire me to represent you, and I'll go to D.C. and kick some left-wing ass. Voters in the Texas 6th Congressional District vote Big Dan in the special election. I'll fight for you in the Texas way of life. Let's make America Texas again. I'm Dan Rodeimer, and I approve this message. Okay, dude. I, all right. I don't know where to... I didn't want to pause it. I wanted to see this entire thing before we, like, actually get into it. I mean... I mean, this is awesome. Like, this is fucking dope. Here's this ad from his 2020 Nevada campaign. Well, he wasn't looking as beefy back in uh, Nevada. Dan Schwartz is lying to you. I had one arrest in my life while in college. Those charges were dismissed. I have no convictions and no criminal record. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very different. Wait, I love when I love when fucking dipshits have to literally uh, do these like uh, uh, I was totally exonerated. No wrongdoing type ads. Remember when fucking in Georgia they had to do that for Purdue? Purdue, David Purdue, totally exonerated. No charges. Yeah, David Purdue, totally exonerated. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, this is so good. Yo, this shit is so fucking fake. It's awesome. I love that. Like... Dude, get higher PewDiePie to do a fucking apology video. Like, that's probably going to be better than whatever the fuck this is, okay? Yet, with the millions of dollars Schwartz makes in China, he's trying to buy our congressional seat. Schwartz has introduced more taxes. 
That's really interesting that his accent and uh, speaking uh, changed dramatically when he moved back to Texas, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, two out of three dirty jobs done. I'm Big Dan Rodeimer. ...than any Republican in state history. He proposed a gun ban. He supports amnesty. I'm Big Dan Rodeimer, and I approve this message because... Hmm. Texas has big problems. We need a big fighter to solve those problems. Dan Schwartz is lying to you. I had one arrest in my life while in college. The communists in D.C. are ruining America. We have a big problem. Texas, send Big Dan to Congress. Huh. Very interesting. Hey, Republicans, have you guys tried hiring a different person to make ads, by the way? Like, have Republicans tried to... And Democrats do this shit, too. I mean, we've made fun of how similar the fucking Democratic Party ads are. But this is literally the exact same ad, dude. This is the exact same ad. What we're watching right now is the exact same ad as this. Okay, here. and putting it in her holster then walking dc's just show me the fucking ad dumbass is it fucking fuck show me the ad show me the fucking 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 ad why is it so hard to just find the actual ad oh my fucking god 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 Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just the ad. Just the ad. Just the ad. Just the ad. Why is every fucking video? Okay, this. I'm Lauren Bobert, a mom, a small business owner, a defender of freedom. Here's what I know. You protect what you love. President Trump built a big beautiful- This isn't the- this isn't the ad. I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. This isn't- literally, this is not the ad. Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Boebert, and I want you to send me to Congress to help President Trump build the- This isn't the one. Wall, drain the swamp, and stand up to all the left-wing lunatics. I'm pro-Trump, pro-Constitution, pro pro This is it. I'm Lauren Boebert, and I approve this message. Thank you. Thank you, ultra bad dude. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a newly elected congresswoman from Colorado. Even though I now work in one of the most liberal cities in America, I refuse to give up my rights, especially my Second Amendment rights. <laughs> I will carry my firearm in D.C. and in Congress. This like, this is what I, I know how to handle Nancy Pelosi and stop her bull and I'll put a boot right in her socialist platform. caused outrage from Democrats and the media. Why? It's our job in Congress to defend your rights, including your Second Amendment, and that's exactly what I'm here to do. In DC, of all places, we should be encouraged to practice our rights. This is a great touch though, the we the people in the clouds. It's a wonderful touch, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> the, the hilarious part about it is that she made this video before, like, literally, this video got released, I think, two days before the Capitol insurrection. Um, so, I mean, it's very obvious what they're doing, right? This is uh, Republican identity politics, right? This is what it is. It's like, yeah, I'm a small business owner, and I fucking love shooting guns. I will fuck this gun right now. I will suck... I will suck the dick off this gun. I will give me the gun right now. 
I will suck it. I will suck the bullets right out. Brother, I fucking love guns. Oh, fuck, I love guns. They turn me on so much, brother. Fuck. And it's a grift. And all the dumbass Republicans are like, hoggers, hoggers, hoggers. She did it. She wants to suck the gun off. Oh, fuck me. I, I want this. I want this so bad. I want this so bad. Fuck, I'm going to vote for her extra hard. I'm going to vote for her illegally, brother. Like, and it's enough. It's like, all you need to do in order to run as a conservative, all you need to do is just be like, I'm going to shoot Nancy Pelosi in Congress <laughs> with my Glock. <laughs> and conservatives will be like, let's go. I can't wait to vote for this person. Holy fucking shit. I can't wait to vote for her. She's going to really be great. She's going to do great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Vote for me and I'll kill communists. Oh, fuck yeah, brother. Fuck. Oh, shit. I need to vote for this person now. Um... It is very, it's great. This is just how it is. Okay. Um. Uh, from Wikipedia, Rodimer grew up in Rockaway, New Jersey and attended Seton Hall Preparatory High School in West Orange, New Jersey. Rodimer attended Ava Maria Law School of Law and graduated in 2013 while attending law school in Florida due to another fake judd. Oh, of course. No, he's, he's Texas. I mean, he's literally a wrestler, guys. Like, he is an actual actor, okay? So, that's not that surprising. I mean, these guys are all doing the exact same thing. Like, they are just doing the fucking Trump shit. Those charges were dismissed. Well, looks like I already did. Like, this is so funny. I have no convictions and no criminal record. Like, this is so obvious. You know what I mean? Men in women's bathrooms, boys and girls sports, higher taxes. So, the, the, the most dog shit part about, like, trans uh, athletes in high school and shit is the fact that, like, in places like Arkansas, now what are you going to do? You're going to have, like, creepy ass, like, uh, uh, coaches fondle little girl's uh, genitals to see if they're like, they can, what are they going to do? They're going to do genital checks to see if like, uh, someone is, uh, someone is trans or not. Like how the fuck, what, what are you going to do? That's literally a thing now, by the way, just great. Yeah. Let's just, uh, let's just let Jim Jordan handle it. Oh, <sighs> that was actually proposed. I know I'm not, uh, making that up. That is, you know, Orson's uh, penis inspection day at school is uh, no longer a meme. Lauren Bobert, my husband, when I was 17, my husband, when I was 17, he let me do a penis inspection on him before I married him, by the way. Thank you, Lauren Bobert. Hoggers. So you want men and women's sports? Bitch, I don't give a fuck, dude. And neither do you. And also, they're not men. Trans women are women, brother. This notion that, like, oh, so you want, like, really? Really? You, you, you. Really, you, you really, you really care about, uh, not only do you care about women's sports, but you, you also care about like high school women's sports. That's kind of creepy, my dude. It's kind of weird. Maybe you should stop being so fucking creepy. Why do you care about like 14 year old girls running around? Kind of weird. Fucking pedophiles, dude. That's what it is. You guys are all pedophiles. That's what I'm going to say going forward. <clears throat> Not like they care about the trans men. Yeah, they don't. It's just, I'm telling you, it's just fucking bullshit. It's literally bullshit. I'm sorry that uh, so many chatters just want their hands to be held. And, and want participation trophies. 